Hey there, it's Greg welcoming you back into The Samplist and today we're taking a look at Kirk Hunter Studios' latest release, Concert Strings Adaptive. Concert Strings Adaptive has a rich and lush symphonic sound with great playability and comes in full ensemble patches and separate patches for each of violin, violas, cello and double basses. It has a full range of articulations as well as a slurred or bowed legato in both true and polyphonic forms. It downloads at 1.56 gigabytes and unzips onto your drive at around about 12.6 gigabytes. It normally costs $499, but is currently on intro price at $259. And thanks to Kirk Hunter Studios for providing a copy of the instrument for today's review. But having said that, they've had a total of zero input into the making of this video. It's really important to us at The Samplers that you get unbiased and unfettered opinions so you can make the best purchasing decisions. And before we kick off, be sure to take the opportunity to hit the like button to give this video a boost. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and the no notification bell to stay on top of all the latest reviews in the world of virtual instruments. And with that said, let's head on over and have a look at Kirk Hunter Studios Concert Strings Adaptive. Hey, okay, so let's dive right in. I've loaded up a default patch for Kirk Hunter's Concert Strings Adaptive. Um, let's just have a bit of a play straight out of the box, as we like to do to get our feel for it under our fingers. So I think the first thing you really notice about Kirk Hunter's Concert Strings Adaptive, it's got a really warm out of the box, gives you that nice big Hollywood soundstage feel. Lovely, very warm and rich and you don't have to work too hard for that. That's a nice way to really start. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the user interface and the layout of the instrument itself. So first of all, to the left-hand panel of contact, under Instruments Adaptive, there are five different folders. There's an ensembles folder and one for violins, violas, cello, and basses. Each of these folders have further subfolders that are all replicated for each section. So with the ensembles, for example, there is a folder dedicated to the velocity vibrato and CC controlled, where you can have the CC11 dynamics and CC1 vibrato controlled. Then there's a series of shorts and a series of specialized articulations. From what I can understand with regards to the velocity vibrato and 
the CC1 folders is just a different variation on how you can control the instrument. So for example, the one I've loaded here is from the Velocity Vibrato Control and I've loaded up one of the two patches that are there, CSA Ensembles with Violins 1 All and CSA Ensembles with Violins 2 All. So we've got Violins 1 and Violins 2. I must confess I couldn't intuitively work out what CSA represents, Con uh, Concert Strings Adaptive, of course, there, it just came to me. So having a look at over here on the vibrato section, now I'm yet to really introduce the UI, but just drawing your attention momentarily to this side, the vibrato is controlled by velocity, hence the name Velocity Vibrato and CC Control. So as I hit notes, you'll see that the vibrato changes relative to how hard I hit it. So low velocity, low vibrato, i.e. next to none, or at high velocity, a lot higher velocity and therefore higher levels of vibrato. Conversely, with the Dynamics and V uh, CC1 vibrato, just go into that folder, I'm going to load up that particular patch. And when that loads up, you'll notice that I can control the dynamics at the very top you can see the value there that's my cc1 uh, bigger button cc11 and the vibrato is controlled by the mod wheel so whereas previously i was hitting the keys to trigger the vibrato here i can choose to use my mod wheel personally that's my particular style but of course everyone's utterly different so staying here for the moment, how we've got laid out, there is a panel below and intuitively you can see here there is a line um, dedicated to the violins, violas, cellos and basses. There is a control for legato, you can control the attack of each of those um, string voices. You can even control the range of the voices, so currently they're set at the traditional values where a, um, a violin finishes at G2 and then the viola is down at C2, etc, etc. But you can modify them and change them if you like. This menu here allows you to choose the combination of the short that coincides with the long. Now the reason why that's important for adaptive strings is, as the name it suggests, you can play both shorts and longs at the same time. So by default, we have a spiccato and a sustain. So what this means is, if I play a long note, there is a slight macato sound at the start, but you get that lovely sweeping sustain sound. But in the middle of my playing, if I change to a more staccato sound, uh, a playing pattern, allows you to change between shorts and longs within the one patch. Now, my suspicion is that what that is, is they've got some very good samples that have allowed you to play the sustain and the spiccato at the same time. So playing this patch is triggering just the spiccato part of the sample at the very start. Does a great job nonetheless. This panel here allows you to control the velocity sensitivity of the shorts. Um, you control the shorts themselves. You can control whether you're having a, a bow change type of sound. This column here allows you to control the octaves. So you can play a voicing in um, octaves at a global level. So for example, obviously at the high end, I'm gonna play in the um, higher end. Putting it on. And as we mentioned previously, vibrato controlled by either the velocity or the mod wheel. On the far right, you can control by either soloing or muting each individual voice. 
This menu function here allows you to control the global CC assignments. So at the moment, CC11 is assigned to dynamics and CC1 is for the section vibrato. You can select one of these to choose whatever CCs you desire. Going across this middle panel here, the speed allows you to choose from a various numbers of uh, attacks, if you like. I don't know if that's the right word or a speed. So for example, if you have Presto set, you get a very sharp. But alternatively on say, for example, Largo, a very much a softer attack and it's not as crisp. Give you some lovely different dynamics. This panel here called touch allows you to control from the best I can discern the dynamics and the vibrato chasing the velocity. So you can choose this particular value here, say dynamics and vibrato, that will actually chase the velocity. So the harder you hit particular notes, the more dominant the dynamics and the vibrato. Now let me put my Largo speed back to default. Now I must confess, um, I'm not terribly familiar with how these work and the actual value they bring. Um, if only, and this is kind of my first criticism of uh, this particular instrument is, it doesn't come with a user manual, at least not one that I could find. So I'm trying very hard by trial and error to work out what it is, but for, to the best that I can discern that you can uh, control the dynamics and the, um, the velocity and the strength of it by these various settings. Over on the far left hand side, you have various number of reverb settings. So the default is the natural recording. I understand it was recorded in a, a Presbyterian church in Santa Monica, but there's some various different reverb settings down through to a bone dry. So for example, the bone dry. <laughs> be used potentially if you wanted to add your own reverb plugins on top of it to create your own and shape the sound according to your particular needs. Um, and finally over in the top right hand corner there is two, two, there are two buttons indeed. The mix allows you to control the velocity of each of the different string sections. You can um, control the velocity sensitivity so what you can do is that you can shape the velocities of each of the notes that you might have. So for example, if I'm soloing, if I've understood this correctly. Yeah, so here's the violin. But as I go down, the velocity drops away and comes back up. Actually, that was a bit of a bad choice because I'm right at the bottom end of the, uh, the violin itself. So if I put it up here a little bit, it might be a bit more... There we go, off into the distance with no velocity, but then comes back up. So you can create your own curves for each of your instruments if you so choose to shape the particular dynamics and the velocities of each of the notes. Personally, this doesn't really stand out to me to be a terribly helpful one. I, I struggled a little bit to see how I might use that, um, actually shaping the dynamics of each individual note, but um, that's just me. Perhaps you might have uh, a different insight than I would. Okay, bringing our attention down to the bottom of this particular panel, and we have the familiar range of controls around the EQ, the dynamics, the ambience, which is about the reverb itself, the, uh, the size of the reverb, the room size, if you like, the vibrato controls. You have three microphones to choose from. There's a near, a mid, and a far. And finally, you can control the overall balance relative to each of those instruments. So returning back to our home page, finally, uh, let's have a look at the very top here. You can control the release triggers. There is a mute function, which is a consordino type function. So. 
putting the mute on. To give a more silky, soft string appeal, I suspect that that's probably more of a filter than an actual Consordino as a separate set of samples dedicated to Consordino, but does the job quite nicely. There's also a Soltesto button, so for those who aren't familiar, Soltesto is when the string player plays the strings forward of the sound hole towards the neck more than the back end, giving a, a softer, warmer feel. Turning it off. Not terribly noticeable, I must confess. And there is the added reverb that you can control, and as we mentioned earlier, the dynamics controlled by CC1 or indeed velocity. So let's turn our attention now to the other directories. Let's have a look at the shorts. Now the shorts here, you can see there's a quite a range of shorts available from Bartok with damped and normal variations, Colenio, likewise there's a damped version, Detaché, Pizzicato with damped and normal, Spiccatissimo, Spiccato and Staccatissimo and Staccato. So quite a range of shorts there. A Bartok, Pitts, Colenio, Detaché, Pizzicato, Staccatissimo, Spiccatissimo, Oh, I see. They've been repeated for the violin two sections. All right, so let's just choose one of them here. I'm going to go for the Bartok Pits. Um, the uh, I'll do the main version. So the Bartok Pits, for those who aren't familiar, is where the string player pulls the strings back and let, lets them go and they slap against the fretboard, giving a very percussive sound. You can imagine great for staccato high energy sequences. There's the Colenio. The Colenio, again, for those who aren't familiar, is where the string player turns their bow upside down and strikes the strings with the wood of the bow. Again, quite percussive, similar to the Bartok Pit, but maybe not as aggressive. Detaché, I won't go through all of them, um, Pizzicato we're all very familiar with, let's have a quick listen to the Pizzicato, great for high end short percussive sounds. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Now I want to have a listen to the sp spiccatissimo, spiccato, staccatissimo and staccato. So these are ordinarily short articulations where the string player strikes a string with the, um, the bow, but obviously varying length. So spiccatissimo is typically very short and sharp, spiccato a little bit more lengthy. So I'll have a look at this. Now I'm going to load up the spiccato and then alongside it, I'll also load up a staccatissimo. And let's just play them alongside each other. So I'm going to, so there's now two instances inside my contact instance, so I'm going to solo the first one being spiccato. Let's have a listen there. Of course, not forgetting about the velocity. Yep, nice and warm. Very bold, very bold sounding. But let's have a quick look at soloing this staccatissimo, which is traditionally shorter. And 
this is what I noticed about the shorts, I must confess. Staccatissimo. Spiccato. Not a lot of daylight between them. Let's go with soloing a spiccato. Not a lot of variation there. Uh, it feels like the spiccato and the shorts there are quite similar. I also found that too between the damped and the normal ones. They're slightly different, I suppose, but not markedly so. So quite a few options there, but arguably probably not a lot of breadth and depth between them. Okay, cool. Let's return back to our original arrangement with just one instance. So let's get rid of these other instances. So let's go and check out the legato. So I've gone back in to reload the CSA ensembles with the violins one patch from the CC11 Dynamics and CC1 Vibrato folder, preferring obviously to control vibrato and dynamics with my CC1 and mod wheel. Okay, so let's have a quick reminder of just what it sounds like out of the box playing in a legato mode. stuff lovely really strong warm string sounds that i mentioned earlier but i want to explore the legato feature because i must confess i i found it quite difficult and uh, i just want to explore that um, as i said earlier too one thing that really sort of sticks in my mind i found quite difficult is there is no manual that i'm aware of i hope i'm mistaken but i couldn't find one so i'm trying to i wish i'd had some manual to explain all this to me but Here's the legato setting here. Obviously there's a global legato setting for each of the voices. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn off all the other lower registers and let's just stick to the violins. So, whoop, not quite that high. So what we also have here are three additional legato settings, poly legato, true legato, bowed, bowed legato, which is currently um, not selected and the global legato setting so clearly if i turn the legato setting off you would get as you would normally expect the ability to play polychords or multiple notes all good so selecting legato you would expect obviously to be legato And that's fair enough, actually. I just noticed that there was actually overlapping notes in legato mode, and I suspect that's because the poly legato is selected. Okay, fair enough. Playing multiple notes in a poly legato fashion. But even without the poly legato turned on, I'm going to turn it off. I can actually play poly legato, I think. So I'm a little confused because I'm in legato setting. I haven't got poly legato set, but I can still play poly legato. So I'll try the true legato. Now I'm holding down one note and overlapping the others without lifting the other note. Lovely, true legato as I'd expect. No interference by overlapping the notes. But still have poly legato, that's unusual, okay. So now I want to explore the difference between true legato and bowed legato. Now, somewhat confusingly, I can select both at the same time, which that strikes me strange. It, I'm not really sure what I'm playing here. Okay, so true legato again. 
Lovely. That sounds really quite nice. Now, I'm going to individually select for the bowed legato. I can't hear a whole world of difference. If I'm really trying to think about it, I'm listening for something that indicates a bowed legato sound. And I can hear a slight pulse, almost like the, the start of the spiccato sample. Taking that off and returning to true legato. That slight little start of the spiccato t t t seems to be missing, which might be the bow legato change. Also, too, I'm not really sure here if I've got the bow change here, but I've got bow legato on here. What does that mean? Sounds like the true legato, but if I put the bow back on... So a little, I'm not really sure the relationship between bow change and bow legato. So in sort of summary, I suppose I'm, I'm a little confused about the relationship between all of them. I would have thought that you wouldn't be able to multi-select playing true legato at the same time as poly legato or even the same time as bow legato. And also, you know, now that I've got the legato global switch off, I can play the poly chords as you'd expect, but I've actually got selected poly legato. So I found this really quite confusing. So I, I think we could, there's an opportunity here to really just clarify the relationship between all those legatos. And I think it would be really, really helpful if there was a manual that actually just set it all out. Maybe I've misunderstood something. I hope not, but that was just my experience. But also I want to show you what the legato is capable of so I've been doing a little experiment and let's join me over here I'm going to retain this patch and I'm going to put it into our legato mode lovely and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a quick run here so let's try and do this in real time let's hopefully this works so I'm in Cubase obviously for those who aren't um, I'm going to move this into step input mode which means I can input my notes one note at a time Let's go back to here. Let's just play a simple, say, a C minor scale. All right. There we go, a simple ascending. Now, this is where I think really the, the adaptive strings really shines here. The ability to play staccato and legato notes simultaneously. So let's have a quick run of this. Hang on, let me turn off the step input and I'll just quickly play this run. Lovely. Now, let me see if I can make this one here a little longer. And hopefully you'll hear the long note at the end of the series of staccato notes. Beautiful, I really like that. So there's a very clear staccato sound here because the notes in this little sequence are separated. They're not legato, meaning they're overlapped. So again, for those who aren't familiar, in most libraries to trigger a legato setting, you would normally have the, lo the notes overlapping, and which we don't hear. So you get that clear staccato sound. Bravo. It sounds really quite nice. So let's experiment this a little bit. I'm going to turn off the grid snap, which means I'm now can move it in or out of the various settings and just drag these across so they overlap quite heavily. So we should get a more fluid legato sound. Nice, it does that quite well. Now let's have an experiment of some of these. Let's go to I'm going to call this the true legato. So I'm going to deselect the other two options, assuming that I have selected correctly for true legato. And now let's repeat our little sequence. Nice. Works really well. I like it. Awesome. So that sounds really good. And that was with a, um, a quantized unit of 1 16th now note. So what would it sound like? I'm going to test it. I'm going to turn it into a 32nd note and do the same thing. So obviously the notes will come across quicker. So again, returning into my step mode, 
I'm going to return the cursor back here and let's play our C minor scale. All right, went a little bit longer than I did last time, but that's okay. Turn off the step input. Uh, bugger. I haven't quantized everything, have I? Okay, so let me just do a little bit of a clean up here. Manually. Okay, I put the grid back on. Let's push the C back to here. Oh, this one's a bit wonky. Let's do this one over here. Here we go, composing in real time, guys. And I'll just quant them up. All right, so lovely. Now we're in 30 second notes. So again, here's the staccato, non overlap, non legato. Cool, not bad. Does a pretty good job. But let's obviously repeat what we did before. And I'm going to go back here and I shall. Do as I did before, take off the snap on the grid. Let's lengthen these notes somewhat to overlap predominantly. And now what does it sound like? Nice. Now actually, I'm gonna take it out. To be fair to the original exercise, let's get rid of those extra notes. And again, the legato. That does a really good job. So that's what sounds really quite nice. So, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if there's an opportunity here, if we could potentially fix up how that legato operates so it's a little clearer, but the actual behavior of it does quite a good job. So yeah, bravo for that one, uh, Kirk Hunter, adaptive strings. So I quite like that in the end. And actually one final run through, I'm going to put it onto the mute setting. I'm just interested, it just came to me, let's try it again. What does that sound on the mute like? Yeah, nice. So it seems to behave really quite well for runs and can handle very rapid MIDI note changes. So um, that's a, a great positive. Awesome, okay, there we have it. I'm now going to show you a short composition I did recently using concept of adaptive strings to show you its full potential, hopefully give you a, an in-depth overview of what we can do with it. And then on the other side of that, I'll give you my final thoughts and we'll wrap up today's video. So let's dive in, have a look at the composition process itself. Pretty straightforward stuff here. First thing I did, open up a piano and I just came up with a simple chord sequence, starting with a G minor to an E flat, to a B flat, and then back to an F major. So of course, no great compositional shakes there pretty much straight out of the book and the reason why i chose something straightforward was because of course i wanted to really focus on the um the kirk hunter strings itself so then having got that i just liked playing around with the um, ensemble patch from kh adaptive strings and then having got this uh staccato oh, sorry beg your pardon, the default spiccato sustain patch which is the default dynamics and vibrato chase under the touch, the default first Presbyterian Santa Monica um, uh, ambience reverb. And then I chose under the speed, the Largo, which has a soft attack rather than a fast presto attack. So a presto attack would 
whoops, excuse me, let me just have a quick look here. Select the ensemble strings. Yeah. So a very distinct sharp spiccato at the start of each note, as well as sustaining it. So but what I wanted was a largo, which as you'll hear is a lot softer on the attack. And that helped set the scene. So first thing we recorded was that ensemble string patch and the very start of it, as you can see here, is nothing more than just the bass in octave. So what I've chosen to do here is I've got the ensemble patch to play the role of the bass rather than using a bass um, instantiation in its own right. And you'll see here under double bass, it's empty because the ensemble strings is playing that role. That's just no particular reason other than I just felt comfortable with it as a nice way to play in some rich chords. And it starts out with... I'll just solo it, straight up octaves. And then having gone a second time around, I just thickened it out a little bit by adding some thirds and fifths. And there's the E flat with the B flat on top. B flat to octaves and finally the F with its fifth in the C. Cool. From there adding some weight to the top of a melody line, or not quite a melody line but a supporting line with the cello. So the cellos now look like this on top. I'll pop them in here adding a little bit more depth and you get this kind of thing building up. So the cello playing the role there, adding a bit of melodic depth in the cello range. And that cycles around. And of course, at that point, good idea I suspect. Let's add a bit more further depth with a viola. So here comes the viola, the next range up. So now our strings are building nicely. The KH Adaptive Strings is doing its job, sending some really warm, lush string sounds. And just to be sure, what I've tried to do as much as I can is again, try to keep your bass here, down in the bottom register, quite separate in terms of the distance between it and the upper range. Obviously with harmonic sequence your lower bass notes are going to sound muddier if they're too close together so give them lots of space good old standard string writing 101 there and as you go up the range you can let them collect a little bit closer together in the upper range so continuing that pattern let's go back i also introduced a violin which is the next layer up again so bringing in the violins playing a melody line. And if you're going to go that far, you might as well add a second violin. Let's put in everything else. Back down here. Now, obviously, I'm only talking about the pure strings. I'll share with you shortly some supporting um, rhythm and harmony from other uh, sections, including the brass and the winds. But for now, having done that, let's see what we put, get together with the second violins. And actually, just make sure the first are in there. And now we get... So those second violins are harmonizing with the first. And that is essentially the whole string piece. Hopefully you can hear so those strings really coming to the fore. The KH Adaptive does a lovely lush job 
coming straight out of the box. And this is playing relatively simple chord oscillations. There's not a lot of fancy stuff. And I haven't really, if I'm honest, taken full advantage of the features of KH Adaptive here. I've really relied on that sort of lush, like legato string feel that blends, gives it a nice sort of Hollywood feel. I hope you agree. Cool. So really from there, having got all that, it was just adding some more color and depth using the rest of the section. So of course we've got some brass here. I won't take you through it too much line by line. Suffice to say that Got some supporting horns and trombones at the very start so i'll just bring the brass into picture here going back to the start you'll have well let me let me solo the brass horns and trombones and even at this point a bit more depth i brought in a solo um, tuba just to add that bottom end which sits really nicely alongside obviously the bass in the strings maybe in the upper part of the tuba you might reach the cello and we're building it so let's change it up a little bit bit of melody in the horns reinforcing each other Returning back to that piece, I thought I'd throw in obviously some winds, so again, some high and low winds, uh, bassoon, some clarinets, and maybe something reaching into the flute range, but these are ensemble winds, and so we get this sort of thing. Just provide a bit more support. Bring it all together here. Of course, I forgot to talk about the, the um, percussion, didn't I? Percussion here. I'll let you have a quick look. We've got some great cymbal swells, I think, at the start. And then let's have a quick look. Open up with cymbal swells. Some hits in the bottom of the sub. Some more hits, the timpani rolls swelling together with the cymbals. Before some taiko and bass drums take over. And that builds a little more. Let's enter in with some orange drum. which I've just added some flams, give it a bit more width. Finally, bring it all home. Hey, and what about we finish with a, a flute trill? Nice. So there you have a breakdown of the composition. I hope relatively easy and straightforward, I imagine, but I'm hoping you agree that this brings out the best of the Kirk Hunter adaptive strings in all its glory, long, sweeping, Hollywood-style sound of strings that blend really, really well together. Okay, so let's head on over now. I'll give you my final thoughts and we'll wrap up today's video. Turning now to my final thoughts. Concert Strings Adaptive is a highly playable symphonic string library whose strongest point is that big, lush Hollywood soundscape you can produce straight out of the box with little to no tweaking. It also handles very well both the long and short notes within a single passage, saving you the drama of switching between a short and long patch or being forced to use key switches. That said, I found some aspects wanting. I said earlier in the video that I wished there was a manual rather than having to work it out for myself, and it wasn't until I was in the final edit of this video that I discovered there actually is a manual, but it's buried deep in the bowels of the website in a not so obvious place. So I'd suggest making that manual much more prominent and visible, or actually delivering it as a PDF as part of the installation. 
I must confess, I struggled with the Legato, and while it performed admirably when I found the right settings, I found the UI layout for Legato confusing, and I had to work hard to find out how those settings work, my earlier comment about the manual notwithstanding. I couldn't hear any discernible difference between the Violin 1s and the Violin 2 patches, nor much difference between many of the related subgroup of short articulations like staccato, staccatissimo, spiccato, spiccatissimo. And it is quite memory heavy, with a fully loaded instance requiring 2.14 gigabytes per instance, which is quite heavy, I thought. The samples do have an admirable lush symphonic sound, although I did get a couple of instances of phasiness with a couple of harmonic combinations, particularly at each end of the frequency spectrum, low and high. I really think concert adaptive strings would layer quite well with another solo string library that has a sharper, cleaner definition, so the two together would definitely give you that lovely depth as well as a crisp clarity that concert strings adaptive doesn't have on its own. But definitely one of its big pluses is that it is very responsive under your fingers as you play in real time, and I agree with another reviewer on YouTube that concert strings adaptive would be great for playing live for this very reason. Using the time-honored metric of bang for buck, at its normal list price of $499, I would struggle to part with that much money, and even at its current discount price of $259, it still felt quite pricey for what it was. Some of the features, like what I assume was a digital filter simulating Consordino or Saltasto, as well as limitations between the character of some of the articulations, they're legitimate in themselves, but not at that price point. All in all, Concert Strings Adaptive is a solid workhorse that has a warm, lush, out-of-the-box sound that with some work to tidy up some of these inconsistencies could well play a prominent role in a composer's toolbox. And with that, my final act today is to say thank you for stopping by and taking a look at Kirk Hunter Studios Concert Strings Adaptive with me. On the way out, you can help the channel by giving it a big like to share the love with all the other musicians just like you and me. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and you'll be fully armed and be at the forefront of the latest news and reviews from the world of virtual instruments. This is Greg Ravel signing off for The Samplist, wishing you all the best on your journey to find your sounds and find your soul. See you on the next one. <laughs>